Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this? You may ask, so I'll tell you. The accept meaning of angel is messenger and the accept meaning of destiny is to make them establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Jen Thomas. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date, as it really does mean a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women to cross those in their life, heal their past, create their future, and transform the present, so they can take charge of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use future life progression, past life regression, angelic Reiki, angel oracle cards, guided meditation, hypnosis, to help women who feel lost get clear on their reason for being here. And I've also created several transformational packages, a journey through lifetimes, as well as a six-week guided meditation series to help you take charge of your destiny. Now, each episode of this show covers various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation and angel oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Jen Thomas, about putting emotion back in business to inspire others to lead with love, kindness and compassion. Now, Jen is an intuitive coach and spiritual mentor, helping business owners unlock their intuition and harness the power of their emotions to create super successful businesses. She is a leader and advocate of working with emotions in business and was invited to give her TEDx talk, Putting Emotions Back in Business, inspiring others to lead with love, kindness and compassion. With a 20-year corporate background, Jen knows what it is to exist in a fear-based energy and how disconnected and isolating that can feel. She also knows what a, a transformation journey it is to break free from the institution and blaze your own trail, leading from the heart rather than for financial gain. Jen has been on her own transformational journey from that place of fear to one of love, where she can be her true and powerful self. After receiving guidance in 2019 to take her business online, Jen took the leap of faith required and tripled her business in 2020. In May 2021, she successfully delivered a £10,000 launch of her new Soul Entrepreneurs Club. Now, Jen's story is a journey of denial and conformity to freedom, authenticity, peace and happiness. There's led her not only to help clients, but charity work with the White Lion Trust and writing a book called Nature's Wisdom. Now with testimonials such as, I had some sessions with Jenny when I reached a crossroads in my business and personal life and had no clue which direction to go in. I can't describe the profound effect working with, with her has had. I can't recommend her enough. And Jen's online course has been invaluable to me. It's helped me identify what's important to me and has given me the tools to develop an action plan to realise my goals. It will be an ongoing help since I can revisit whenever I need motivational boost. So without further delay, hello, Jen, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Oh, thank you, Ray. It's absolutely wonderful to be here. And thank you so much for inviting me onto your show. I'm really well, thanks. I'm really looking forward to our chat today. Brilliant. So am I. So before we do get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that not only can you share this video, but you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Jen and I want you to be part of this conversation. So please do not be shy. So, Jen, why don't you tell us more about your journey and why we should put emotion back into business? Thank you, Ray. Yes. I mean, it's quite quite a big question, isn't it? Um, so my journey, I mean, like everybody's journey, it's, um, you know, there, there are highlights and lowlights to it. Um, but essentially, my journey has been about really recognizing and owning who I truly am and it's probably taken me a good 40 odd years to work that out and get there and, and step into who I am but I suppose it first started really with my spiritual uh, gifts and connection and awakening when I was about 14 um, and I know now <laughs> that it was Archangel Michael appearing in my bedroom at the end of my bed just calling out my name 
and I could see this huge blue, this, you know, Archangel Michael's blue light in front of me. And I'll be honest with you, Ray, I was shit scared, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it was a very... I, 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 think, I think any 14-year-old would be sort of like, oh, my God! <laughs> it was exactly it, yeah, like what the hell happened there um but obviously that feeling of love came with it as well so um you know there was nothing particularly dramatic past that I think that was drama enough for one night um but from that moment on I became very aware of um just feelings and emotions around me whether they be of my family members um, of friends or now I know to be earth energy that I was picking up on and I was experiencing um, premonitions sometimes about my friends and family which um, you know were a bit out there but sometimes about world disasters too um, that were very very difficult particularly at that age you know very um, heavy energy to, to be able to process um, and, you know, but I was living in the Western world, as I still do, in a very um, institutionalised society. Um, and so I followed the path that I, you know, should follow. Yeah. <laughs> and I went to college, I went to university and I did get the, you know, high degree and I did then go on into corporate. It was a very interesting uh, memory, actually, that came up for me just this morning, funnily enough. Um, and the memory was being given a choice when I was, uh, I must have been 19, I think. At, you know, I was in my first year at university and in my halls, in my room. And I remember distinctly being given a choice of uh, my spiritual work and gifts on this path or the kind of corporate and more commercial path on this side and you know at the time it didn't feel like a particularly huge choice um, yeah. but it clearly was it was a life choice and I chose the the kind of corporate commercial 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 path as many of us do because I was very, I wasn't fearful, but I just couldn't even see what sort of life I could have following my spiritual gifts and path. Yeah. And something that I really didn't understand either. Because, you know, this was in the late 90s. Yeah. Um, that for me, there wasn't any kind of way of training or finding out more about who I was and what my gifts were. So fast forward a good few years and I, um, yeah, I was in a world of conformity like, you know, a lot of us do because it's what we're conditioned to think, feel and be. And it works for a lot of people. You know, don't get me wrong. My corporate career was fantastic. You know, I learned a phenomenal amount and connected and had the privilege of working with some incredible people. Yeah. Uh, who I learned a lot from and and hopefully hopefully I was able to share some pearls of wisdom with them too <laughs> um but I think you know there was always running in the background this this kind of inner calling it was like a little whisper I would have called it then you know there's a whisper telling me to do things like I would I had a whisper to go um traveling to Australia um, and connect connect with that earth energy there and I've been very fortunate to have traveled to many places around the world um, including New Zealand and Japan and America um, and well a lot of America and just connecting in with the different energies I didn't realize consciously that's what I was doing at the time uh, but I always had that calling to do so so I was aware that I would get a sort of sensation or a feeling and then I would act upon it right yeah. which we obviously now know is our intuition and guidance and working with the universe and I remember in my late 20s my dad passed and um, at the same time I lost my job 
and uh, the rest of my family moved away and it was a very it was a very traumatic time um for obvious reasons um but also I was I remember sitting in the flat I lived in at the time and just calling out I need help please help me I need help and of course <laughs> in flew the universe like a <laughs> like a no nice shining armor <laughs> um and yeah had uh, a, a job just delivered to me really it just fell into my lap it was the easiest interview I've ever done it's just a cup of tea and a chat <laughs> for this we, huge, like, we like those ones I know right for this huge job and I ended up staying in it for 10 years uh, and you know learned a lot um but I had it's really interesting actually for what I know now um about the um energy development through the earth but it was 2012 that I went traveling <laughs> yeah and I know 2012 was a great awakening for a lot of people and uh th that woke something up in me it woke up to say I'm not happy I'm not yeah. happy here um there's something else there's something more and you know, I I was very aware of this kind of empty feeling. And perhaps like a lot of your listeners in that very fast paced corporate world, the way I dealt with that empty feeling was to try and numb it. Um, and I numbed it with alcohol. I numbed it with work. I numbed it with partying. Yeah. Um, just to yeah, just to try and probably transmute some of the very harsh energies that I was feeling. Yeah. And also, it's kind of the adult way, isn't it? Of just sticking your fingers in your ears and going, la, la, la. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't want to know. Um, and I I valiantly carried on that path for a number, another few years. Uh, changed jobs, uh, got a promotion and thought this is it this is where I can make a difference <laughs> and it's very true it is very true that is exactly where I made a difference it just wasn't in the way that I thought it was going to be right as is often the way right <laughs> so yeah. that was in 2014 where I had an epiphany if you like the classic epiphany wake up moment so I had, it was a big deal for me, still is a big deal, actually, but I quit smoking. Well and done. yeah, thank you. Um, great, probably one of my greatest achievements. <laughs> That's um, a brilliant one. Well, it is huge because anyone that has been in any addictive state, which I find is very common with yeah. empaths and sensitive people, actually, um, it's a very hard thing, or can be, a very hard thing to overcome and let go of and yeah. release so <clears throat> but it was actually the very beginning of my journey uh to where I am now because what it encouraged me to do was start to look for a different lifestyle points and the first one was going on holiday and for me usually a holiday had been you know the classic well, it wasn't two weeks. I never gave myself two weeks off. A week in the sunshine, restaurants and more kind of partying, right? Yeah. So the temptation for alcohol and smoking was, you know, too much. But it was the first time I realised that I was acting in self-love. Yeah. So I took the decision to, and it was the first time I'd ever done it. And the universe, again stepped into my path to create the perfect perfect opportunity uh where an old school friend of mine popped up in my facebook feed um as a personal trainer and she was um she'd left her corporate life and she was in portugal on this health retreat running fitness classes and that was just part of it. It was a, yeah. it's a juicing detox retreat, actually. And I thought, well, that's perfect. Yeah. That's absolutely perfect. There's definitely no temptation of um, alcohol or cigarettes there. No. <laughs> so off I went, off I went. Oh, and I can't tell you, Ray, on the inside 
Oh, that poor little love. That poor, I, I was going to say little girl, and it was the little girl in me, I guess. She, on the outside, was this with great big bags under her eyes. But on the inside, she was crying her eyes out. And, yeah, through that process of detox, of course, you're detoxing your emotions too, right? And you're not aware of it necessarily. Uh, but on that mountain in Portugal, beautiful, beautiful place with very magical energy, uh, I had the great awakening um, that said, I'm deeply, deeply unhappy and I don't want this career anymore. I don't want to do it. There is not one fiber, <laughs> one cell in my physical or energetic body that wants to do this anymore. Um, and it was such a huge wake up call, huge that it was, you know, it was like quite a physical sensation, actually. Um, so, again, like a lot of people, I had this great awakening and I knew that my life was going to be different. And I got back home with all these intentions and did absolutely Being nothing. <laughs> absolutely yeah. nothing. You're not the only one that's done that. There's so many people. Yeah, because life happens, right? And this, this kind of vortex that we've been sucked into that goes at 100 miles an hour keeps us in it, right? Because yeah. we're going at 100 miles an hour. So look, if that is anybody listening or, or watching this, you know, please know that it's okay. You're, you're a human being and it's okay. Like you will get there when you're ready. Yeah. Um, and the universe will align the perfect opportunity for you to do so. Um, so <laughs> uh, I then, I, I, I did get there kind of, about six months later, I think, again, I was feeling exhausted and tired and needed another holiday. So I took myself off on a yoga retreat. Um, more floods of tears, yeah. <laughs> more rec recognition of this is not good. This is not yeah. good. But also for the first time, a huge recognition of I am the only one that can change this. Yeah. The only one. Nobody can do it for me. Yes, you can get support and encouragement and your angels and guides will be there helping you for sure. But ultimately, you are the only one. Yeah. Um, and at that point, that's when I started to take action. And of course, the universe played its ace card for me because we know the universe is always working for us. Yes. And um, yeah, again, in my Facebook feed. Uh, was this free uh, weekend training, weekend training um, to learn how to become a life coach. And I just thought, oh, helping people. Oh, my God, that's it. <laughs> that's it. I can make a difference. So just to, to kind of paint the contrast, um, my, my job at that time was in brand management and trade marketing in the video games industry um, with some amazing, amazing, talented, lovely people in it. But it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't aligned to my heart and soul. My heart was calling out to help the world and yeah. make a meaningful contribution to, to my life and those around me. So... Fast forward another, when was that, 2014, another 18 months. And I had signed up to train to be a life coach. Um, and I hadn't done anything about it. So again, I'd made this decision. I'd signed up and I did nothing. I was doing a lot, but not that. Yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, because the universe asked me if I was sure. The universe okay. asked me if I was really sure because the day after I signed up for that life coaching training, uh, I went into work and I was called into the MD's office. And I was like, wow, how do you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was to be uh, offered a promotion and to take on a bigger role. Yeah. 
So my commercial brain went, oh, brilliant. Well, I can do train to be a life coach and earn enough money so that I can just perfectly transition from my full time job into my own business. (laughs) And yeah, I'm laughing because I know like 95 percent of coaches do have the same thought uh, and it's rarely the the outcome. Uh, So the universe, again, working for me helped me to recognize firstly well more not necessarily a recognition but highlighting the lack of human humanity in the corporate world and the lack of consideration and value put upon emotions and feelings Mm -hmm. um i was sitting at my desk for months Uh, having panic attacks and nobody noticed I could see other people in that building struggling I could I could see (laughs) I could feel other people struggling deeply struggling um and uh yeah and yet it all the focus came back to numbers Mm -hmm. it was all about numbers it was all about profit all about the bottom line under lots of different guises <laughs> but ultimately it was we're here in business to make money that yep. business and um yeah and it, it it cut me cut me deeply and had this you know then just this awareness of the whole world oh my god the world is sucked into this paradigm of thinking mm-hmm. and it's not true it's not true no um so yeah the universe in 2015 in fact six years ago nearly to the day I broke I finally broke um and it was the best thing that ever happened for me um it was horrible really horrible at the time a panic attacks I was in front of a GP not able to speak or string a sentence together I was so exhausted and so emotionally wrung out yeah that it would take me probably a good two or three minutes to sit and construct a sentence that made sense. Wow. Yeah, frightening. It was. It was very. It was. I was aware of it at the time. It was like I was observing myself at the time, yeah. and I'm sure <laughs> quite a part of my energetic body just removed itself to kind of avoid the the fear and the harsh yeah. energy. But it goes to show what we are capable of and as women actually how truly strong we are and how determined we are because despite everything that was happening around me I was still pushing on through now I don't recommend it and I certainly don't advocate it at all but it certainly did teach me just what I'm capable of and how strong I truly am having been told throughout my corporate career grow a thicker skin Jen you're, t- you're being too sensitive. Don't be so emotional about it. And I know many of your listeners will have heard probably up, probably very recently, very similar language. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is, as, as we know, it's attached to the patriarchal structure, which doesn't value emotion. Mm-hmm. Um, and yet <laughs> we know that love as an emotion and a feeling is our greatest strength. And that is the universe, right? Yeah. And we have the universe within us. So on the 15th of December, 2015, I, yeah, finally let go. I finally let go and gave in and allowed others to step forward. And uh, I have to say, because of the way that I was then very disconnected, very, and I'd removed myself from a lot, um, that I didn't have really any family around me and only one friend. Uh, and yeah, so my sister-in-law and my one amazing friend and the GP were fabulous, absolutely yeah. fabulous. And I'm incredibly grateful to them, always will be. And yeah, I just signed off. I was signed off work that day and I have never been back since. Um, 
six years wow um <laughs> and yeah it was the best thing that ever happened for me so that following year I did step up to my dream and I took that training to become a life coach and la- launched my business later on that year um and I've been an advocate of working with those emotions ever since um and how important it is to honor how you're feeling yeah um but I suppose that (laughs) alongside this the whole time was this great spiritual awakening and it was a very parallel journey up until a couple of years ago really and I know it's the same for a lot of people that they have their spiritual practice and their spiritual beliefs kind of separate from their work and I very much viewed it that way um until I blended the two together to create Soulpreneurs Club um I think that you know we've been taught it that way haven't we we've been yeah. taught that you know business is logic rationale based decision making problem solving um, which does take quite creative energy, interestingly, uh, but a very masculine energy to 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 make money, right? Yeah. So, um, in fact, it was around, it must have been around when I had the breakdown. I mean, it's all a bit blurry because I yeah, it, it always really does. wasn't with it. Uh, but I do remember having um, an experience with angels at that time because I just remember I remember waking up and I screamed out I need help I so notice the second time I've done this I need help help me and I can remember you know blowing snot bubbles yeah <laughs> the night that yeah. you know that properly unattractive yeah. <laughs> kind of yeah I can't breathe I can't breathe <laughs> yeah oh I'm so glad I can laugh about it now bless her um and I could see these beautiful gold like a just this string of golden lights dancing in front of me and I and it was just follow me that's all I got was just follow me and yeah I did essentially is exactly what I did um and I took this journey then of getting to know myself again I had no idea who I was I didn't know what made me happy and that was when I really reached within and within is where I found the universe and I found the universe just by going out for a walk every day being in nature slowing down feeling the earth beneath my feet Um, and this was winter time right so there's a lot of, I mean, it was so prophetic. <laughs> there was a lot of dying kind of um, plants and trees and everything going on around me. But then even as early as January, I can remember seeing the buds starting to form on the trees. And I thought, I can remember thinking, gosh, I haven't seen this since I was a child. Mm. We used to spend so much time outside when we were younger, just playing and just... yeah being noticing what was around us before we started our 200 mile an hour lives and slowly day by day I started to notice my feelings and what they were telling me mostly they were telling me I was really bloody unhappy (laughs) yeah yeah um but also they were helping me to recognize there was a lot of anger in there a deep rooted load of anger that had been festering for years um so some some incidents in my childhood that I'd not or thought I'd dealt with but hadn't dealt with more memories surfaced that I'd buried so deeply they weren't there um and yeah more of just those anger feelings and where I'd allowed my self-worth to be compromised started to surface because I was ready Mm. up until that point I hadn't been ready so I'd created the space the universe had created space for me to look at those and work on those 
And slowly, slowly, little by little, with the help of my guides and angels, I was able, and the coaching actually, doing that training, because I trained as an NLP practitioner first and then then trained as a life coach after that yeah and coupled with the mindset shift and the healing work and the time out in nature and the yoga practice and the meditation and the talking to my friends (laughs) and the reiki healing you know it's always a great big package of wonderful support help and encouragement I started to recognize who I truly was and who I truly am but still my spiritual practice and my business two separate things and yeah my original coaching practice was helping people very obviously and understandably to recover from burnout and overcome panic attacks because I'd learned some really awesome techniques to stop a panic attack in its tracks now for me that was life-changing so I wanted to to share that with my clients and because obviously I deeply empathized with anybody stuck in corporate and and clearly still do but again over here was you know I was giving myself oracle card readings every day I was in meditation practice connecting with my guides every day (laughs) Um, But I kept it very separate from my clients because sitting there was still this fear energy. Still, like, I can't totally break free. Yeah. I'll be laughed at. I won't be taken seriously. And I know a lot of your listeners will really resonate with this. I'm in a, I've, I've come from a top corporate position and now I'm, now I'm, you know, working with oracle guards, oh, cards, oh my God, I'll never be taken seriously. I'll be laughed at, I'll be ridiculed, right? <laughs> yeah. Notice I know, all the judgment coming so from you. Many people that that's happened. Yeah. So, and that, whereas I've always been, yeah, I've always been talking about angels and stuff and stuff like that. And it's not bothered me. But yeah, quite often, um, yeah, people that I've seen, they're kind of like, yeah, I don't want to admit it. Unicorns, angels. I don't know, I can't, but I'm kind of like, yeah, well, we never have a <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, and I'm so mainstream about it now, but, and find it so easy to talk about now, but I can rem- remember when I first started talking about, I first started offering um, healing and um, readings as part of my coaching packages. I can remember when I first started voicing it, like, I, my voice would go really tiny. <laughs> I'd start like like something my throat would crack, <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't speak. Um, so lock you, lots of work to be done on throat chakra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but eventually, yeah, it was you know in that beautiful introduction you gave, it was that leap of faith that I had to take that truly set me free. And of course, it happened in the most perfect way possible because I'd been doing my own spiritual practice for years by this point then that I felt really confident in what I was doing and in the connection that I had with the universe and like my soul team who I call them now uh, those angelic and spiritual guides working with me Um, and yeah it was in May 2019 the strongest guidance I'd received in quite a while uh, that said to me, you must take your business online and do it as soon as you can to prepare for something big. (laughs) No shit. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, um, I'd started, I remember about 2018, I'd started to do a lot more stuff online. Right. Yeah, Uh, it's fascinating, isn't it? And of course, my logic, that old commercial brain still leaping forward going, no, nah, that doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. Why would I do that? Doesn't make sense. But it was such the strong calling. And actually, my intellectual and also um, learning side of my brain kind of went into, mm, okay, we could really get into this. Like, how does it technically all work? 
Um, and yes, fast forward <laughs> 2019, October 2019, I launched my Soulpreneurs Club. And I peaked, I peaked out of my spiritual closet, Ray. I didn't fully leap out, but I peaked out. That's good. <laughs> I, know. Good time. <laughs> I know, but I know, it's so cute. Uh, because I thought, right, how can I help the world? You know, that's how we approach things, isn't it? How can I help the world? How can I best serve my clients and the world for the greater good? How can I do this? Oh, cha-ching, in came the idea from my soul team. Well, you could help, now you've been doing it a few years, you could help coaches set up their own business. So you can teach them all the marketing stuff you know. Remember, I just spent 20 years in I was going to say, the marketing, you're, you must know so much about it. And wow, and I didn't realise how much I knew, right, until I was meeting other coaches who didn't know what I presumed to be quite obvious. So I started teaching very practical elements of it. So how to do marketing, how to build and launch your coaching business, and then blended in the spiritual practice. So how to connect with your uh, guides and angels, how to create your own spiritual board or soul team, as I call them now, um, who es essentially direct your business. Yeah. And like they don't, I get marketing plans from them and all sorts now. They 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 get quite excited. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, what are we working on now? Um, and I blended the two together, uh, but still notice that old institutional kind of comfort blanket in there with that practical marketing stuff because. At the time, it was giving me a comfortable platform yes. to speak from. But still, my throat would get a bit squeaky. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it was this year, well, this time last year that I got the guidance. All right, brilliant work, lovely. Well done, dear one. They call me dear one. Well done, dear one. It's time to let go of that now. And it's time the world needs you to step into who you truly are. And you need to teach business women how to work with us, how to do this, how to work with soul and how to work with the universe yeah. in a business setting. So 2021 was when I updated my Soulpreneurs Club um, course and program and coaching program to be purely about how to access and develop your intuitive skills and connect in with your beautiful soul team who have always been there um, and really lead from your heart and soul to create just the most beautiful business that you're head over heels in love with. And here we are today, Ray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's it's such a, a brilliant way that your story has unfolded, and it's a story that I'm, um, it's kind of like the way a lot of people's story unfolds when they actually recognise it, because sometimes I think it, it's happening. It's all it's always happening, but we don't recognise that it's happening, and we fight against it. Yeah. As you said, you know, you did on 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 some of the things, but at some point, the universe just goes. <laughs> forget that right we we're going to really push this on you yeah. now you know yeah. you've, you've got no choice <laughs> yeah. we, we, we are going to do this yeah um and they will come in and they just literally hit you with everything they possibly can that you can cope with they yes. won't yeah they they won't go more than what you can cope with mm -hmm. 100 percent. even if that's a breakdown because actually that just was the best thing for me it made me stop and rest for three months it was amazing <laughs> yeah yeah so what so so um, your soul entrepreneurs club how does it work you know you've given a, a, a rough idea of it but but how how does it actually work yeah so um soulpreneurs uh club is uh, so people that join it, so you've got, there are two ways or two options when you join. The kind of top, top tier program, if you like, is um, you join with uh, a small group of other women, other business women, like, just like you. Um, and you, in your own time, follow my 11 module course, which is 
it teaches you right from the very beginning of what heart communication is, how to connect with the universe and a bit of the science behind it, as well as the um, spiritual aspects, ever ever the practical approach, as is my energy. Yeah, mine, <laughs> mine is as well. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, and the, the modules just l- gently take you through learning to connect with your guides and angels setting up your own spiritual board and the most important part um i help you through that course to set up your own virtual healing sanctuary where you go in and you start dealing with those past traumas because we all have them every single one of us and it's all relative what is a trauma to you is your trauma regardless of whether somebody else's is worse or better or whatever yeah it's all about you and what it means for you um in fact let me read this quote this is my favorite quote of carl jung until you make the unconscious conscious it will direct your life and you will call it fate yeah and those i call them like um so in your healing sanctuary there's like a garden often full of weeds often <laughs> so it's when you go and pull out those weeds those are the unconscious beliefs that you've got going on their past traumas their fears um i lovingly call them bullshit stories that we're telling ourselves so that's a huge part of that program and then you join me um it, with your group for weekly calls on on zoom it's all online so it doesn't matter where you are in the world and that's where the the coaching and the mentoring comes in and I really help people through that and you work with me for a year then there is the lower tier um which is a more um accessible option in terms of finance and time as well which are people's biggest pain points right so you can do the course in your own time, join the Facebook group and I can do, you know, a little bit of coaching through posting in there. And then I come into the group and do live Q&As every quarter. So you can kind of get the coaching and mental yeah. that way instead. And that is the wonder that is the Soulpreneurs Club. Wow. So so the top tier, you you, you start it on set dates. I'm I'm guessing then uh yeah so i will run either an immersion event through my soulpreneurs sanctuary facebook group um or through webinars so um so if you're connected with me either in that facebook group soulpreneurs sanctuary or on my social media then you'll find it there when they i think the next one is going to be in january the date hasn't been confirmed yet um but it will be towards the end of the month yeah cool okay so people can look out for that so i also mentioned um in the thing um the white lion charity what's that about oh ray the white lions my goodness oh they have been my greatest calling um so and it's to do with my very strong connection to nature which i think has probably come through quite quite clearly through our chat today um i didn't know who they were I didn't know anything about them but they came to me one lion came to me uh, in my meditation um and you know I still wasn't that au fait with what my gifts were and what I was doing it's like holy shit there's a lion <laughs> okay I'll just go with it yeah, yeah, <laughs> I've just come this far just going with it <laughs> like, might as well carry on Um, And interestingly, my dad was South African and I wondered if it was him at the time. It certainly had his kind of energy connected to it. But I think it was an introduction. I think my dad introduced um, to help me to feel safe and, you know, connected. Um, Yeah, and I was continuing to work with this this white lion that would sit next to me on top of this kind of well cliff on the plane overlooking the planes um it was quite like a scene out of lion king actually uh but i was being shown this crevice in the land and i was being asked to heal it so 
I was just doing heart healing work. So I was just pouring love and light into this crevice and filling it up with gold, Christ consciousness, light energy. Um, a few months later, <laughs> another universe delivered via Facebook feed for me was a, a talk about animal communication. I was like, oh, it sounds amazing. And it just happened to be in a little village hall just down the road from me. Very random. <laughs> not so random Hi. um <laughs> of course not which is where i then met my animal communication trainer and mentor uh winter Worsthorn. and she introduced me to the white lions where my mouth just hit the floor because i realized these were who i'd been working with in my meditation practice and the White Lions, uh, so the White Lion Trust is found, founded by a lady called Linda Tucker. She's written a book. It's a Hay House uh, published book called The Mystery of the White Lions. And the White Lions are sentient beings um, who are in physical form as White Lions on this earth at this time to help humanity come back into balance and right restoration. It's to help heal the earth. And um, they are, they're also known as star lions. So they have brought the peace plan down from the star energy <clears throat> into the land, into the earth. Yes. And they are, they literally call people to them. Like they will appear in meditations that there may well be people now listening to this going, huh, I'm really drawn to lions and cats. Huh, maybe that's me. Maybe it is you. Um, it's highly likely, in fact. Um, and yeah, so, and I now, one of my soul team is Zukara, who is one of the white lions, and he stepped forward to work with me, and his name means spirit of the sun god. Um, yeah, he's a beautiful, beautiful um, lion with a very, it's a very, um, you know, the story, the lion, the witch and the wardrobe, he has yeah. a very Aslan type energy to him. Uh, and in fact, his father, so his father, his grandfather was called Mandela, um, who embodied um, the same energy as Nelson Mandela. Um, uh, he was actually, his true name was Aslan, but he was named Man Mandela to protect him um, yeah. because he was being saved, rescued from trophy hunters. Um, yeah, so he has this lovely Aslan energy about him. Um, and yeah, I mean, they are also, it was the White Lions, it was Zukara who invited me, shall we say, uh, to write my book, Nature's Wisdom. And it is, um, I'm channeling Mother Earth, essentially, uh, and providing wisdom from nature for humanity on how to live a more balanced life. Wow. So when you're looking at getting that published? Excellent question, Ray. Excellent question. <laughs> um, spring. Let's go with spring, spring. 2022. Right. You've, you've heard that. You've actually now set it in public. <laughs> spring 2022. You're publishing your book. <laughs> I know, right? I, I can just hear my soul team like, mm -hmm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there and, you are. <laughs> and our, um, uh, in spring 2022 you're invited back on the show oh ray <laughs> okay <laughs> so basically yeah it's we, will, we, will, we will yep it's gonna happen we will make sure you are you are back um in the spring i will keep a date free oh amazing <laughs> oh. and you will come and say yes i've published my book and here it is yeah and here it is you know i'm feeling i'm feeling excited terrified and uh relieved all at the same time relieved because i've already written a good 10 or 11 chapters really? <laughs> so, so you're practically there you just need to finish it off now <laughs> yeah exactly so funnily enough i'm waiting for this um gateway on um at the time we've recorded this um i'm waiting for the gateway on the winter solstice because i know a flood of light is coming through that gateway um i'm being i'm working with archangel gabriel and archangel michael at the moment so i know that flood of light is gonna yeah. pave the way for nature's wisdom to 
arrive in book form. Brilliant. That is, absolutely, that is absolutely brilliant. And that really leads on nicely, because um, as you know, I normally do guide meditation, angel oracle card readings, and I always mm -hmm. like to ask my guests whether they would like a me to do a guide meditation or pull an angel oracle card for those watching but as i know jen does cards as well jen is going to pull a card and i'm going to pull a card for, yeah. for everyone watching so do you want to go ahead yes definitely let's see what we've got for everybody all right and we have a jumper that's hilarious that's sorted and of course the jumper yeah, funny, card funny enough, i've just had a jumper as well <laughs> You know, and I rarely get jumpers. Oh, I, I always get jumpers. And I can't believe this card. Well, I can believe it. Of course I can. This is about co-creation. So I've used Kyle Gray's um, angel prayers, oracle cards. So this is the Divine Father, and it is all about co-creation. Divine Father, thank you for co-creating my world with me. I really sense this is now the time for you to ask for help, right? My whole conversation today has been about those moments that I asked for help. But rather than doing it like I did and waiting till I was completely broken and desperate, ask for help before you need it. Ask yeah. for help every single day every moment you can co-create with the universe Th thank you universe for helping me to co-create whatever thank you universe for helping me to um i don't know eat healthily this month thank you universe for helping me to find the perfect partner whatever it might be but that co-creation energy is really high and really growing through 2022 yeah. so ask for that help it's the classic ask and you shall receive exactly you know and everything that i've been being given is that 2022 is about collaboration as well yeah. it's it's working with others yeah. it's not it's not being your own self anymore or trying to do it on your own right. it is about working seeking out others and working in collaboration and time very nicely with what you said fast vistas expand your horizons oh wow so, uh, so you know again and it ties in with your card absolutely I and mean, beautifully when you start co-creating you start collaborating it's amazing what you are going to find and what you are going to see you know you know if you if you think of the white lions um, you know, and you said surveying the savannah, you know, the vast vista that yeah. is out there and it's yeah. there waiting for all of us and you just need to expand your horizons and ask again, ask for that help, get that connection, find the people that can help and guide you or collaborate. You know, if you're already on that path, find people to collaborate with so that both of you can raise your energy, raise your energy to raise the energy of others, to raise yeah. the energy of Gaia so that we are on that beautiful um, energy that we're supposed to be here for. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Awesome. Love it. Totally. <laughs> really love it. I'm loving our collaborative reading there for everyone as well. That's awesome. Okay. Exactly. It works out really, really brilliantly. So, Jen, do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers? Oh, do you know, it's the simplest one. Um, but trust, trust in what you're feeling. Just tr it is what you're feeling and what your emotions and your heart is telling you is your most powerful guide. Trust it. Listen to it. Slow down and take your time to hear it and feel it. Beautiful, beautiful words. So I hope everyone you've enjoyed this conversation and found it insightful because I know I definitely have. So Jen, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? Thank you, Ray. I've loved today. Um, and thank you everybody for listening um, and spending your time with us here today. I really appreciate it. Um, if you'd like to connect with me online, uh, my Facebook group, Soulpreneurs Sanctuary, is probably the best place. I'm also on Instagram as at Revitalize Coaching, or you can find me on um, Facebook as Revitalize Coaching. 
Um, and if you want to watch my TEDx talk, if you put in, you can go to YouTube and watch it there and just search putting in motion back in business and you'll find my TEDx talk from 2018 um, there if you want to watch that too. But yeah, Soulpreneur Sanctuary is probably the best place to connect with me. Brilliant. And what I do is I'll post um, all those links in the comments at the end of the show. And um, when I repurpose the YouTube video and I add stuff to that, I'll put the link um, on YouTube so you can just click um, oh, and, go, go, and go straight to it. Um, so thank you very much, Jen, for sharing your informa information and wisdom. And thank you, everyone, for watching and joining in with the show with your comments and um, your thoughts. Um, and, you know, and we will um, answer everyone who's actually commented and said hello to us today. And of course, if you have reached a crossroads in your life and you need some guidance in finding the meaning of your life or getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. So please feel free to reach out and connect with me. And we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call to help you gain clarity on where you're going and how I how you can empower yourself to take charge of your destiny. And of course, please feel free to join my weekly uh, newsletter and receive a free future life progression recording where I take you into a future lifetime to get guidance and clarity that you can use in your current life, as well as a couple of other free gifts. So again, thank you so much for watching and I'd like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And of course, if you are watching this on YouTube, then please feel free to subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when the show goes live or when I post new guided meditations to help you on your journey. And I look forward to you all joining me same time, same place next week. Thank you, Jen, and goodbye to everyone. Bye. <laughs>